Hello viewers, I'm Chris. In this video, I want to walk you through step by step a guide to version control with Power BI reports using Git integration. Git integration helps in tracking changes to a file or set of files over time so that one can recall specific versions later. Git integration can involve a lot of codes. As you can see from the screen, these are the codes one needs to master. But don't worry, GitHub Desktop doesn't require you to code. So you don't need to master all these codes for you to do Git integration. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's head to GitHub Desktop. This is GitHub Desktop. When you start a GitHub Desktop, this is exactly what you will see. If you don't have GitHub Desktop already installed in your system, it's very easy to install. Just go to web browser, type GitHub Desktop, follow the instruction, and you will get it installed. This is what you will see. Create a tutorial repository, clone a repository from the internet, create a new repository on your local drive, add the existing repository from your local drive. So before I go further, I need to create a folder. I go to where I want to create the folder. Uh, say git sort projects. So I've created my folder. Next thing I need to do is to create a new repository on my local drive. So I click this, I name it GitHub Projects. Description, not necessary. Local drive. Let me select the folder I created, basic folder. I click Create. I've created a repository. Let me go to the folder. So this is the folder. I open it. This is the Git repository I created, and this is what we help to do the version control. So if you don't see this in your folder, go to View, untick this, hidden items. By the time you untick it, this will appear. Without this, there is no way you can do the version control. So it must be there in your folder. You can also create a git repository using code. Let me use another folder. git repo code. Now that I've created the folder, so all you need to do is to go to command prompt. This is the folder part. CMD. As you can see, that folder is in the directory path already. Type git init, click OK. All right, it has initialized the git repository in the folder I created. So if I go back to the folder, this is the folder, you will see dot git repository. So that's how to create the git repository using command prompt. You can as well right click the, the folder. You right click it, you click the command line you are seeing there. Open bash git folder. It will take me to the git directory part. So you type git init. So that's it. If you go back there, you will see that it's also created. This is the way to go about it. We can use GitHub Desktop to create the Git repository, just like we did. You can also use command prompts to create the Git repository. So whichever one you want to use, you get the job done. Now that I've created the Git repository, let me head over to Power BI Desktop. My data is already there. I've imported my data with different tables. I need to save it in that git repository folder. So, 
this is the folder click on it i name the file i have to change this type to dot bp ip power bi integration project i click save if i go back to the folder this is where i saved the folder all right now that I've saved it in my Git repository folder, I go back to Git desktop. The information I have in my Git repository folder are right here in my GitHub desktop. I need to commit this. Committing means saving them. I say first commit. So I click commit, my data has been saved. So if I go to history, I should be able to see the file. Like I said earlier on, Git integration is all about tracking changes, collaborating with different groups, making changes to projects. I need to make some changes, and you will see those changes will reflect here. Let me go over to my Power BI desktop. And make some changes. Click this. This is the first change. Let me make another change by adding measure total amount to the sum orders. orders. Orders I click commit. Alright, so this is the new measure I created. So I've made two changes. Let me save the changes I've made. Now let me go over to my GitHub desktop. As you can see, it's showing that I've made some changes in those files. Let me commit these changes. Second commit. I click commit to the main branch. So those changes have been committed or have been saved to the main branch. This is the main branch. So if I go to my to the history, you will see the second commits, the second changes made. So if I click on it, I'll be able to track those changes. The first one is that I added card visual to give me the total sum of sales. So this is it, total sum of sales. That's the first change I made here. As you can see from here, so it has reflected on the gate sum. The second change I made is to add measures. As you can see, this is the measure I added. This is measure I added. So it has reflected here. Here, you can see the changes I've made. Now, I can go ahead to undo the commits or revert the changes made, and so on and so forth. Now, you observe that all the changes, all the commits I made, I made them in the main branch. And that's the only branch I have here. You can go ahead and create a new branch. If I click new branch, big git projects. I click create branch. This is the branch, it has already selected it for me. By default, GitHub desktop will automatically create the main branch. Now it's left for you to create your own branch. Branches can be helpful in many ways. Branches allow many uh, people to work on different tasks simultaneously. Let's say, as a developer, I'm working on a task, and another developer here is working on a task. What we need to do is to create different branches. I will create my own branch and commit all my work in that branch. Developer 2 will create his own branch and commit all his work to the, that branch. What happened now is that we now merge those branches 
to the main branch. That's the good thing of using branch. You don't use the main branch to do your work. The main branch is for the collection of different works. Now, if I scroll down to merge the work, let's assume that I did the work on my own branch. All I need to do is just to click this. It's asking me to choose the branch in which I will merge the work I have done. So I will now select my branch. I select this and click create a merge. These are different options in which you can merge. Create a merge commit, scratch and merge and rebase. This is how to merge what you have done in your own branch you created to the main branch. Now that I have done this, I need to push these changes to the GitHub repository. This is my GitHub. There's a difference between GitHub Desktop and GitHub Cloud. Now the Git desktop is right there sitting in my in my local machine. So I don't need cloud or internet to operate that. I need to push the work to the GitHub cloud for storage purpose, for collaboration. So the first thing I need to do is to create a repository. So if I click this, create new repository, I put the name I want to use, I say GitHub project. Description optional. I choose the owner. Say private. I click create repository. I've created a repository. Now let me go ahead and push my work to this repository. I go to GitHub desktop. I click push repository. That's the name publish repository. Description, keep this code private, organization, I click publish repository. Publishing the work to the github.com, so fetching the origin. So the work has been published to my github.com. If I go to github.com, I click on my organization. This is the github project. All right, as you can see, my work is right now in the github.com. Both the first commit, initial commit, second commit, the branch update commit I made. Remember, I merged everything together. So I can see my work here. The next thing I need to do is to go back to my remote desktop and make some changes and see whether it will reflect right here on the github.com let me add a new column first amount orders other quantity others units click commit let me make another chain let me save my changes I go back to GitHub desktop to commit those changes. As you can see, these are the two changes. I write top commit changes to the GitHub. I click commit. So I click push origin. So it's pushing it to the GitHub.com. If you check here, you will see the changes made. Do not chat and the column i created test amount column i created so these are the two changes completed let me go to my github.com let me refresh as you can see this is the third commit it has reflected as you can see these are the two changes i made reflected on the github.com under the visuals this is the donuts uh, chart i created as you can see, if I go to the table, this is the column I created. You can deploy this to Microsoft Fabric. All you need to do is just to connect the github.com repository to Microsoft Fabric. So how do we go about it? 
go to the Microsoft Fabric at the left side of the environment, click on it, click Engineering, create a workspace, name it, let's say GitHub Deployment, Description non necessary, every other thing non necessary. I click Apply. This is my GitHub workspace. So I go to Workspace Settings. Click on Git Integration. So connect Git Provider and Account. As you can see, this Git Hub is great because I'm using a Microsoft Fabric Fire version. So it's very easy to connect. All you need to do is just to follow the instruction and you get it done. That's it for this video. So if this video is helpful to you, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you can be duly notified whenever I release video. And also don't forget to share my videos so that others can benefit as well. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.